Hello and welcome once again to another math lesson. This time we're looking at compound inequalities and solving compound inequalities. So what on earth is a compound inequality? Well, it is the following. It is a linear expression. Okay, a linear expression. Hopefully by now you know what we mean by linear expression. It means it is something of the form ax plus b. If you simplify it, it comes down to something like this, ax plus b. So what do we mean? There's constants where a and b represent constants. It would be numbers like 2x plus 1 or 5x minus 4 or whatever. You get the idea. So the a and b represents numbers and the x is our unknown. Okay, so it is a linear expression has constants constants and uh, variables variables or one variable actually to the power of one okay so the exponent the highest exponent of the variable is one okay um, the next part of a compound inequality is that it is an inequality so there's a smaller than sign and the smaller than sign has an upper limit upper limit and this upper limit would be a constant so let's call it constant u it would be a number like 10 okay and th so what that means is that this expression will be smaller than a certain number but this expression will also be bigger than another number so we will have a lower limit so we will have an upper limit a, a constant number and we will have a lower limit a bottom number now how we will solve this is exactly the same as in any other uh, linear inequality the only thing is what we do to the middle so here it is what we do to the middle we do to both sides and that's it let me just quickly explain what I mean by this what we do to the middle we do to both sides so what you should understand about this type of expression if I have an expression like this that um, a it's like there okay that a x plus come on a x plus b is greater than a lower limit let's just call it let's call it, let's call it lower limit like this lower limit okay and smaller than an upper limit what that means is that a x plus b is greater than this lower limit and a x plus b is smaller than the upper limit now why do I write it like this well I would write it like this to show you that if I wanted to solve for x I would first subtract b on both sides okay so subtract b subtract b then I get a x plus b is sorry not plus b the plus is now gone ax is greater than lower limit minus the b okay and then I would divide both sides with the a now it depends on whether the a is positive or negative whether I'm going to change this around so let's just for for this illustration's sake suppose that a is positive so I'm assuming a is positive which I'm not allowed to do really but just for the sake of illustration I'm going to do this and there is my final answer okay that x is greater than the and whatever this this is remember the lower limit and uh, negative b uh, the b actually and the a would all be numbers so this would be a value a number now what you'll see on this side is 
well, I haven't solved this yet. But if I do solve it, the process is exactly the same. I subtract the B um, on both sides. Okay, and I find that A x is smaller than u l minus b over a because then I'm going to divide both sides with the a so eventually I get exactly the same thing except instead of being the lower limit it is actually the upper limit and I find that in the end the process was exactly the same so what I have could have done from the very beginning is just do this in one go in other words subtract a negative B on this side and from the middle as that's where I actually want to get the X alone and from this side and then divide an A in the middle and on this side and on this side and eventually I would get to exactly the same answer so hopefully you understood what what I meant by doing this and uh, the only point here that we have to keep in mind is that when dividing or multiplying with a negative and I do apologize my writing pad seems to be giving me a little bit of trouble at this stage so please please forgive me okay so when I divide with a negative I should swap or multiply with the negative I should swap the sides okay so what I mean by that is that um, let's say at this point after I have subtracted the B on either side so I had my lower limit minus the B and I had my upper limit minus the B now let's say the moment I divided with the A remember but the, let's say the A was a negative then I have to change my signs around so they should go like this now but this would be a little bit um, uh, counter uh, what is it counter conformity we, we try to always when we write a compound inequality we like to write it as smaller as so instead of swapping the two signs around we'll just swap the left hand side to the right hand side and right hand side to the left hand side I said that wrong way around but that doesn't matter okay so if a was negative then this would end up being the upper limit minus B divided by a smaller than the lower limit minus B divided by a now if you would have would just turn the signs around it shouldn't be wrong it should uh, probably still be right but the convention is to the, just keep it as smaller than signs with X in the middle and uh, and that makes a lot more sense uh, when you read it that this is smaller than that is smaller than that um, it reads in the same direction as your number line so that when you end up plotting this thing we will have something like this in the end our solution should be something like that so this is compound inequalities uh, and we looked at the and compound inequality okay and that's that's what we'll stick to for this video in the next video I'll try and show a few examples of how this is done with actual numbers and not so theoretical as I did it here well, I hope you enjoyed the video thank you for watching and thank you for being patient with my silly tablet and uh, we'll talk again soon in our next video see you there